never panned out. Guys from situations that nobody ever heard of and became great. Uh, I think it's possible that, you know, in some circumstances there might be a different level of competitiveness. But I honestly believe that that's based on the individual and, and that can happen no matter where you're from. You can be that mentally tough regardless of where you're from. There's always a lot of rhetoric um, associated with going into whether it's a bit, uh, conference tournament or NCAA tournament about a new season, chance to start over. But in some ways, just based on what you guys just finished up with, how difficult of a stretch, does it does there more meaning, maybe a possible reboot in, in some ways to the season or goals? I mean, as I've said already, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't. To me, it's all the same season. Mm -hmm. You know, that, well, it's, a new, it's a brand new season. It's the same season. We're going to go try to win a Big Ten championship. Well, we said that, you know, August 1st when we convened before we went overseas. Mm -hmm. We're here to win a Big Ten championship. Let's go get ready for that. That's what we're going to try to do this week. You talked about Dev and Aaron maybe feeling some pressure the other night at late in the game. Do you, do you feel like the team, you guys rose up to number 10 and got a lot of national pub and all that? Did that, you think, infiltrate the, the psyche at all? I think I, I think that's always possible. I, I don't know that, uh, but so much of what you're referring to is readily available. Whether it be used to be, you know, you watch TV, and the newspaper, and that's those still are still ways that you would find information out. But then there's constant information right on your phone, which you have in your pocket at all times, and I think. You, know, you can get caught up in what everybody's saying. Uh, that's why I don't look at that. Uh, you know, I just try to keep working and keep getting my guys ready. And yeah, you, know, you can tell them don't look at. It. They're going to look at it. Uh, it's it's just how, sort of how they live now. You know, and, and uh, as to whether or not it, it directly affected anybody, <coughs> excuse me. I don't know, but I, but I wouldn't dismiss the possibility. Peter Jock had a lot of big minutes the other night. He played some at Michigan State. You've talked about his growth in practice. Has he elevated himself to where he, he could take on a larger role coming I, up? I, I think absolutely. Yeah. You know, he was a guy that coming out of the summer, you know, he was, he was right in the middle of everything. And he struggled in two areas, defensively, and uh, sort of attention to detail. You know, he just always could go get you 25, and you know his his game was a little bit sloppy. And uh, if your game is sloppy at this level, you'll get exploited. Uh, there's two ways to go. You know, you can stay sloppy and blame everybody else, or you can go to work and become determined to complete that part of your game because the other stuff was fine, always has been. So now as he completes the picture, now now we got a special player now. Because he can score, he can pass. His defense, while it's not where it will ultimately be, substantially better. Ball handling where it's not where it ultimately will be, substantially better. Because you can't you can't go get fifteen but turn the ball over. Doesn't do us any good. You can't go get go get 15 and give up 25. Doesn't do us any good. So that's all part of the growth process. And sometimes we forget he's our only freshman. And that's what he's going through. Speaking of the growth process, you look at what Adam Woodbury did in the stretch there offensively. Is that kind of a glimpse of what you foresee in the future with him? You know, I, I do. Uh, but you know, every time you watch film of our team. You watch the impact that he has on the game, and, and it's significant. Now, if it happens to be offensively, people tend to take more notice. And, uh, I think that's just the nature of how most people look at the game. But for us, to be able to have a legitimate post presence defensively, you know, and, and a guy who, who can do that but also defend ball screens and also run the floor and also
also understand how to pick and roll and, and pass and catch. He's incredibly valuable. And uh, you know, we've been very fortunate, obviously, because we have both he and Gabe playing well together and they complement one another.